Time now for the Marcus with Light, and uh, today you've got, you say there's an interesting substitute for corn in cattle rations. Very interesting. One rancher's interesting answer to pricey grain, that is coming up a bit later. Also ahead this week, demand for corn may fall as prices continue to rise. Wheat may get a second selling opportunity, and the government forecasts that cattle supplies will tighten. The annual Pro Farmer Crop Tour in the Midwest has been providing much of the news driving grains this week. And the news is worse than expected crop damage from the drought. Analyst Darren Newsom says that while this continues to support the market and high prices, there is a problem. The problem corn's going to have in pushing significantly higher is that demand's going to come down as well. It's, when, it's one of those markets that we can continue to whittle away demand. We, you know, we, we've already seen it happen in the feed. We've seen export business slow down, not only because of our price, not only because of our lack of supplies, but the river problems are also hurting uh, our, tr our, our movement to ports. So, you know, demand, in be is demand for corn could continue to come down. So I think that's going to limit the possibility of gains, but if we look on out to the new crop, I would not get too excited about, uh, you know, making 2013 sales right now because we're going to see a fight next year over, you know, some dry acres and both corn and beans are going to be high priced and they're going to be fighting for those acres. Uh, we're going to still see a potential for, for not only this year's crop, but next year's crop to still put some, uh, some higher numbers on the board. Meanwhile, some analysts think the month of August offers potential as a time to sell some wheat. Trader John Roach explains why he personally thinks there is opportunity for wheat producers. The month of August, when we tend to move the wheat market up and get kind of a second selling opportunity, it's kind of the first rally um, after harvest uh, in most years. And so when we go back and look at a lot of history, August is a, a, a decent month to be selling in. And then after this month, then you have to go all the way out into February. Uh, and so uh, we think that uh, our hope is that the market doesn't fall very far and that we have an opportunity on a rally here to get whatever sales need to be made during this time frame. Earlier in our program, you saw the update on the low water levels in the Mississippi River. Well, here is a river-related trivia question for you. How much of the nation's grain is transported by barge on the Mississippi River? Is it 60% or 50% or 40% or 30 percent. You'll find out in a few more minutes. The government's monthly cattle on feed update came out fairly close to the pre-report expectations. However, it does project tighter supplies in coming months. I talked with Extension Ag economist John Michael Riley late Thursday morning. So John Michael does this new on feed report document the herd liquidation or culling that we continue to hear about in the beef sector. It does in, in some respects. It's a very interesting report in, in a lot of ways, and we'll get into some of that, but uh, about 10, just under 10.7 million head of cattle on feed. This is uh, on par with where we were at last year, and it was exactly what the pre-report expectations were for the number of cattle on feed. Uh, placement's down pretty hard, down 10% compared to 2011, but you gotta keep that in perspective because it was during the July of last year that Texas and the Southwest was in such a extreme drought and so many cattle were being placed on feed that the July placements of 2011 were the highest on record for that month. So you're comparing it to a, a really high water mark. If you look at that placement number compared to the average, you know, stopping, five year average stopping at 2010, we're actually about 20% above that number. So still very high placements, but down from a year ago. Marketings were, were uh, just under uh, uh, where we are at last year and, and actually on the low end of pre-report expectations. So not as many cattle marketed during the month of July. A lot of folks say the, the heat kept people from, from hitting the grill. Uh, didn't stop me, but it, I can see how it could stop others. All right, and uh, speaking of grills, of course, right now, uh, when we talk about box beef and other, other sectors, of course, uh, retailers are, are all geared up and I guess have made their purchases as far as Labor Day. Uh, You've seen that with the box needs. beef price. Box beef price has just been skyrocketing here lately, which is typical for this time of year, but it's been a, a, a very good event take place because with the, those prices had been getting hit down, beat down pretty hard. Okay, and uh, as far as the outlook here and, and where we go, we're talking about uh, continued high grain feed prices and uh, we're in this trend of declining supplies, no doubt. That's true and it, that was another interesting point of the, the report is that if you look in Texas, the placements were down pretty hard compared to a year ago because that's where so many cattle were placed. In Nebraska, though, where this drought is so much more widespread this year than typical, uh, placements were actually up pretty, pretty hard on the, the light cattle and heavy cattle. So I think now the question is, do we 
keep cattle on grass that's not there or do we put them in a feedlot and feed them essentially gold bars? So, and, and that's just the question that I think we, we don't know the answer to yet. We don't, we don't know what that's gonna do. Corn is so high, it's hard to justify putting them on feed, but uh, there's a lot of cattle out there that need to go. So uh, what that's gonna do for, for, the next, for the rest of this year is the interesting uh, thing moving forward. A lack of forage and high feed prices has forced many U.S. beef producers to cull their herds. This in turn brought down calf and feeder cattle prices. But Purdue Extension economist Chris Hurt says there is a silver lining to this situation. Producers who locked in lower feed prices back in the spring, he says, should be able to hold on to their cows. And Hurt thinks that short-term losses in the next year should be replaced by large profits in late 2013 and beyond as cattle numbers fall below consumer demand for beef. So what about producers who didn't lock in feed back in the spring when it was cheaper? Well, Joseph Watson of Mayfield, Kentucky is using old candy in place of expensive corn for his cattle feed. CNN reports Watson is mixing secondhand salvage candy with an ethanol byproduct and a mineral nutrient and feeding it to the cattle. The producer says he is balancing the ration to not have too much fat in it. Watson reports the cows are gaining weight and not showing any health problems. And he's not spending money on expensive corn. Well, we're about out of time now for the markets. Here is that trivia answer just to have the feature story. This week, A is correct. 60% of the nation's grain is transported on the Mississippi River.